I have a question, uh, mostly for Laura about populism, because populism is a lot of currency. Every day I'm trying to um, <clears throat> deflect falsehoods just among the universe of Facebook friends about fake uses of the word populist. And so I think that it's worth all of us being precise about the word using a little historical precision. I'm intrigued by Laura's very interesting paper, but I just w wonder what she means. What, how is Andrew Jackson a populist? Thank you so much for that question. You're right, I completely agree with you. It's a really important uh, definition to, to, to get right. And I think um, what I'm trying to do with my work is to encourage more discussion around this in historical circles. Because the problem I had when I originally started this work, and um, I, I, I won't answer your question specifically, but this is pertinent. Um, uh, when I originally started was, if I found any reference at all within this period about uh, you know historians referring to him as populist or populist rhetoric it was very fleeting and it is consistently without a definition so that led me into more political ideology Michael Kazin sort of work and, and defining it through that way so right at the beginning of my paper I offer a sort of short uh, it had to be short I would say definition um, of populism as uh, sort of pushing against uh, the, the elites, even if you are an elite, uh, which of course you can't get more elite than president, really, um, and and you know making a sort of appeal to 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 the common man, uh, as it were, in this time. Um, the, the intertwined issues that we have to deal with with populism are both rhetoric, because you could make an argument in this case, uh, as I mentioned in, in the paper, that both anti-Jacksonians and Jacksonians are trying to play on this populist rhetoric, these appeals to the common man. But there's also action. And unfortunately, populism in terms of if a populist is elected, so if you look at any political ideology book, lots of examples talk about Latin America, right? So they'll talk about a populist leader who has anti-democratic trends and yet makes these appeals to the common man. I am doing this for you, except it's expanding their own personal power. Um, I think that we are getting to the point uh, as, as a sort of, Jacksonian historians, if you like, where we are, we are looking more at the sort of uh, development of presidential power. And I would certainly argue that Jackson is, uh, you know, right at the beginning of, in my introduction, it was mentioned that I do work on presidential power. Um, I, I am very comfortable in, in sort of talking about how Jackson changed the presidency. Uh, and the veto is a really good example of this uh, that has been written about quite a bit. So in terms, of, in terms of populism, he is in, in a position as president to be able to act, which of course he does uh, very confidently uh, in an expansive interpretation of executive power um, while saying, making it appeal, this is for the common man. It's a populist rhetoric that he used in 1828, but he's now in a position of power to act upon it as well. So populist in that sense, but I absolutely agree with you. Um, it's a fantastic point to raise that, that I wish we'd have more discussions on this um, and, and have a sort of, uh, more a better idea of how to define this and be more comfortable using it uh, in historical conversations. Well, as it happens, we have a another questioner who wants to have a quick follow up on populism. So, um, Max, oh. pick yourself up. Oh, um, hi, everybody. Uh, great panel. Fantastic way to start my morning. Um, and my question. Uh, or comment, whoever you want to call it, uh, it's directed again at, um, at Dr. Smith and the great paper she gave. And it's also concerning populism. And I'll say first that uh, Andrew's point about populism, it's well taken. I, I, uh, I avoided the term populism when talking about the Jacksonians for years because of the, you know, the concerns that same reasons Andrew raised. Uh, I personally, I have my own story of how I learned to stop worrying and love the word populism just because I found that it's the best term for taking into account both the Jacksonians' democratic sensibilities and their white supremacist sensibilities. But I think, you know, the definition of populism that you were, I think you gave Dr. Smith early on in your paper was, uh, you know, constructing these categories of like the people versus an elite um, mm -hmm. or an establishment, which is a, it's more or less the definition I go with. But I wanna say, I think that your paper also 
it gives evidence for another definition of populism that um, the political scientist Nadja Urbanati has proposed recently. I think your last comment sort of got to this. Populism, not just as being about constructing these categories of the people versus constructing a category of the elite, but also doing so to undermine institutions so that mm -hmm. all trust is placed in, usually in an individual. And mm -hmm. I do think that that's what your paper was showing, this particular kind of capitalism you sort of, you invent this category of the people to empower an individual at the expense of all other institutions. And I was going to ask if, if you, uh, if you would agree that that would be the definition of populism that you want to move going forward. But I think you sort of already answered that, I think in your last comment, that does seem to be the sort of populism you're describing. So I don't know if you could follow up thoughts on that at all. No, that's really helpful. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, and your kind words, I really appreciate it. Um, no, that, that's exactly uh, where I am heading with this. It, it doesn't make me popular in a lot of circles. Um, I get a lot of feedback on my work of, you know, you're reifying populism, you're reifying Jackson. I'm not trying to do either. But, I, you know, it's, it, it's, it's this idea that, um, you know, we all have to be sort of careful. I mean, we all write reflecting our times subconsciously or otherwise. And we all have to be very careful of how we do that. Um, uh, <laughs> And uh, it, 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 it can be, it can create its own challenges, but I think that this is very much worthy of, of greater discussion. I think you're right, um, you know, incorporating these terms, we are political historians, we shouldn't be afraid of incorporating these terms within appropriate historical context. Um, and that point that you made as well about the demo, I mean, th this is this is the great irony. Um, I, I published a piece based on it, based on the, fir the first chapter about um, the anti, well, uh, I, I call it uh, the, the, the uh, anti Jacksonian democratization of the national conventions, 1832 being the first time there were these national nominated conventions. And mm -hmm. of course, the irony of it is that the Democrats were the least democratic of all three yeah. conventions. Um, mm -hmm. And so it gets exactly to, to the point you're making about, you know, democracy, white supremacy, and just how hierarchical uh, Jackson's Democratic Party was. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that. I really look forward to, to developing these conversations. So, so we have to, we do have to be careful about having our a priori definitions of what, yeah. you know, we'd call it democratic, just the, we'd, I'm saying like something's not democratic because it's not like a, uh, you know, a, a collective or something mm. uh, because it, because hierarchy is present uh, because we're, it's like it, there's, you don't look at too many organizations at any time in history and really find that there's, that there's, that there might be democracy in that sense. I was also going to wonder, we got one more question. We have a question here. Uh, I was also Do you mind if I pop in too about of this course. question? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I kind of want to push back a little bit on what you're saying about hierarchy there, Laura, because I think if you spend a little time in the, in the state level and local level nominating conventions, state and local Democrats had an enormous amount of power. And a lot of what they did because of the election schedule, right? Because it existed over the course of, a, you know, I mean, like we think our, our elections are really long and annoying now, right? Like they're, they were insane in the 19th century. So I, I think I, I would just caution against thinking about it in a hierarchical way and just more in the sense of a push and pull between the, the you know, like top leadership on the national level and what was going on in the state level, in part because state level politics were really important in this period. Uh, you know, like the national government just doesn't have the same kind of power that the states do. So I, I, I don't mean to this is hijack the conversation, but I wanted to get that in. You're not hijacking, you're the commentator. <laughs> Hijacked by definition. <laughs> and uh, it's really helpful as well. And, and again, I don't want to dominate the conversation, but um, no, I mean, I didn't at all mean to diminish. I mean, I did a paper on state politics. I didn't mean to diminish it at all. Um, I, I'm simply just, just very brief. I'm simply just um, making the point that even though the, for example, in this case, Pennsylvania State Democrats had a clear policy and then it got railroaded. Oh, no, no, we're going with our guy and what he says. Um, it's, it's just a sort of example of just, again, that, that sort of power. Um, I mean, I, I think of it as a hard, I'm, I probably should think of it as another term, but um, in terms of the Jacksonian Democrats, it's very clear uh, who's in charge. Well, we, we could probably sort of argue all day about populism. I mean, <laughs> populism, I'll just say it's very much a Trump era thing that, that populism suddenly became this nasty word. And I was first time I heard today that somehow now it had white supremacy in it automatically. 
uh, which which it seems like populism is a form of uh, popular politics that academics do not like. Uh, is what is 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 what it seems to me it is. I mean, I'm sure that there must be better definitions. You should just watch out for it, you know, because once it was the populist party, which was had a, had a different sort of scholarly reputation, and uh, I, it just seems like there's a there's a there's a slippage between people don't want to be out saying oh, what the people want, you know, appealing to the people is bad because they're also uh, worried about voting rights and things like this, but but this other way, this one way of appealing to the people is very bad, especially the one that they don't they don't feel good about. So I'm just just would like sort of like to caution everyone about what you're doing when you start employing the word populism as opposed to dem demagoguery, right? That's an old-fashioned one, demagoguery. Uh, uh, or old-fashioned, I don't know, white you know white supremacy if that's what you're talking about. Anyway. 